We have long wondered how to permanently kill the creeper. It is perhaps key to figuring out exactly what the creeper is. And we all want to know the answer. Now you might not know what we mean by permanently killing the creeper, but at the end of this video you will understand our theory. Whether or not you believe it is another story. Let's stick to the theory and you be sure to let us know your thoughts. Now there's a full moon out tonight, some dark clouds and some distant thunder and lightning. And it seems like the perfect night to talk about monsters. We did video content about killing the creeper not long ago. And if you're new to this channel, you may want to watch that video first. We made sure there's a video link in the description. Today's video is highly speculative, so make sure and hold on tight around the curves. Now what is the actual path for killing the creeper? We may not know for sure, but we know how to know. Let me explain. start off by looking at some peculiar traits of the creeper. One of the things we're told is that there's a connection between the creeper and its victims. Giselle tells us in Jeepers Creepers that what it eats becomes a part of it. This statement was never fully understood. It's easy to assume that if it eats a hand, the hand becomes a part of it. But there's much more depth to this information than initially realized. And the actual meaning is very dark. Kenny Brandon tells us more in a very direct way. It knows what's buried here because I'm a part of it and it's a part of me. There's a lot of information in this statement. To briefly summarize previous videos and information, Kenny is telling us there's an afterlife connection between the creeper and its victims. I'm a part of it, and it's a part of me. To be a victim of the creeper seems to be more than death on earth followed by a rewarding afterlife. A victim of the creeper seems to continue to be a victim of the creeper in the afterlife. A victim's soul is somehow connected to the creeper. This is, in and of itself, as mystic and hard to understand as it is disturbing. But there's more to this. It knows what's here because I'm a part of it and it's a part of me. It knows what's here. When the creeper takes a victim, it knows what the victim knows. It gains knowledge. That's where we left off in another video, but we're going further today. Not only does the creeper gain knowledge about the victim, but the victim gains knowledge about the creeper. Kenny's telling us this information because he knows the creeper. Did you even notice? He knows the creepers come into Galen's ranch to collect its hand because he's a part of it. This means the creeper has some control over their soul. But this isn't that far-fetched in the Jeepers universe. It's basically given information. Now we need to break this down even further. Are you ready? It also means the creeper has a spiritual or supernatural ability to connect to the spiritual world. So let's look at this fact from another angle. The creeper's soul, or his essence. In fact, what the story tells us is that it runs out of time. At the end of Jeepers Creepers 2, we see the creeper's husk draw over its face, and the whole world universally decided it was hibernating. And actually, we are given even more information about this transformation earlier in Jeepers Creepers 2. Minxie tells us that the creeper runs out of time, but that it has to go back into the earth, back into the ground for 23 more years. And yet we see the creeper's body hanging on the Taggart's barn wall. That just doesn't add up unless you consider the creeper's spiritual abilities. We don't know exactly how it's possible, but we do know what we're told. The creeper's old body is hanging on a barn wall, and yet it is underground. Somehow it's able to change its location without its body. This is an indication of supernatural spirituality. The creeper doesn't seem to need its physical body to change locations. It's likely this only happens when the creeper runs out of time and it would normally anticipate the end of its feeding cycle if it wasn't injured and go back underground for this transformation. Nevertheless, if this is true, this is quite a unique and formidable ability. Again, at this point, we're only reflecting what we've been told by those that know the creeper. If true, do you know what this means? First of all, it brings into question what exactly the creeper really is. Is it a living creature or is it not living, more of a dark supernatural killer? It also means the creeper isn't completely dependent on its body. The body is more of a tool to interact with the living, but isn't essential for survival. Now let that sink in for a minute. 
There's no way to know all of the advantages that this talent gives the Creeper, but it opens up a world of possibilities. If the Creeper has bodies underground and they're preserved, can it regenerate with a new body if its old body is beyond repair? Does it have an endless supply of reanimations? There are limitations. We know it can't feed for 23 year periods, but it may be able to move from a deteriorated body to a usable body and take on its original form. In other words, it may not always regenerate its current body, but it may have the ability to move to another. This is some highly speculative, heavy information to consider, but it would explain a lot of things. It would explain how the creature has survived for thousands of years and nothing has been able to kill it. It would explain the conflicting information given at the end of the second movie. It would explain why the creeper throws caution to the wind and launches all its attacks head on. It would also explain how it navigates 23 year periods without feeding. Now, none of this tells us how to kill the creeper, which was the original intent of this video. On the contrary, if this information is true, it just got a thousand times harder to kill this monster. How do you destroy a spiritual creature that can move from body to body with potentially an endless number of do-overs? It's like a real-life video game nightmare where bodies or lives are inconsequential. There's always another. Destroying the creeper's body wouldn't destroy the essence of the creature. This information would also bring the identity of this creature closer to a demon than ever before. Demons possess and can move from body to body. Because the creeper was once human, it can't technically be a demon. Demons were never once human. But for the purpose of this discussion, how do you kill a demon-like being? We think we may have the answer. Some strong believers, which incidentally is a description of us here at Beating You, might call on the mighty power of God to destroy a demon or a demon-like creature. But surely there are those of you in our audience without this belief system. And more importantly, we desire to be proactive in this process. You tell us, how do we kill a creature with the unique talent of immortality? Well, let's look at what we do know. It's right there. Do you see it? Let's jump back to the beginning of this video and the description of the Creeper and how it potentially has control over the souls that it's taken. In the second movie, we see Derry and Billy who have returned to warn Minxie that the Creeper's coming. They tell her to go back. This tells us that the Creeper may not have complete control over the souls it's taken. Yes, they are trapped with the Creeper, but they seem to be free to warn people of impending danger. Let's take this a step further. Minxie was able to communicate with Derry she was fully immersed in her dream, and Derry was able to whisper something to her in fast motion. Ultimately, he tells her every 23 years for 23 days it gets to eat. But that's where it got interesting. She asked him what it got to eat, and she received an answer. Minxie was able to communicate with a deceased victim of the Creeper and get an answer. This really isn't anything new since mediums claim to communicate with the dead. But there's another element to this formula that we forget. Minxie isn't a psychic. She is, or until recently she was, a normal girl. So much so that she's met with a lot of skepticism about her dream from her friends. Likewise, Galen doesn't claim to be a psychic, but her dead son visits her on a regular basis. The souls that the Creepers laid claim to seem to reach out to the living to warn of danger or to help them avoid an attack by the Creeper. It knows it's here, Mom, because I'm a part of it and it's a part of me. We established our belief that the Creeper can take information from those it kills, but we didn't elaborate on the reciprocal action. Okay. That's not good. Are we continuing on? Okay, we're continuing on. Kenny knows the Creeper's coming because he's a part of it. It's a part of them, and they're a part of it. The Creeper knows information about the people it's killed. Likewise, the people it has killed know information about the Creeper. A seemingly indestructible creature has a severe vulnerability, and they don't just know about it, they're a part of it. In order to understand how to kill the Creeper, those that are hunting it need to seek answers from those that are a part of it. The Creeper's victims are the key to understanding what the creature is and how to kill it.
We hope that you enjoyed today's content. Sub up and join the fam. And if you fall victim to the creeper, consider reaching out to the living and tell us what you know in the comments below. Until next time, we'll see you.